ask questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Far too long you have stumbled in darkness searching for light. We have a man in our midst who can bring forth truth back beyond doubt, that can open the eyes and ears of those lost in darkness. As Saeed Ali Manisa Hadi Amadi is that man, and the author of over 150 books of a religious and scientific nature. As Saeed Ali Manisa Hadi Amadi has brought forth this information straight from the scriptures, so it cannot be denied. So we invite you to listen, to learn from the true light featuring As Saeed Ali Manisa Hadi Amadi. نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله والي الكريم وصلى الله على أنبياء أجمعين والمسيح والمحتي والمجدد لنا المرسلين Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it and that he is alone and has no partner and that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles. And on the Messiah, the anointed one. And on the Mahdi, the guy. And on the Mujaddid, the reformer, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with As Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. When Christ said he would work all these miracles after he was preaching on the mountains, raised the dead and all this kind of thing, so what happened to the in it? Egypt or Jerusalem, these ministers and these big guys do not know what's going on? Well, in today or in the past? In the past, when Jesus was doing miracles. Well, Jesus was classified as a false prophet, yeah. a typical radical in his time. So they wasn't frightened by Jesus, nor by his miracles, because in Jesus' time, many men had the power to do miracles. He wasn't unique. Yeah. Right? And so what frightened them is when they saw his mass control. Nothing frightens the devil more than mass control, by that I mean. Population control frightens him. He can deal with you at this ten of you. But when he sees one person can make a hundred thousand people walk a certain way, that's when it's time to eliminate you. So Jesus didn't become a threat until he did the Sermon on the Mount and thousands of people came out to hear him. That's when the political government at the time said this man can control the votes. Forget what he's teaching. They wasn't at least concerned about his teaching, about being the Messiah, because they had a million messiahs in Israel before him, false ones and true ones. They wasn't concerned about him being a prophet, because to prophesy in the time of Israel was to be able to tell what's going to happen tomorrow, or whether man would be a prophet then. They were concerned about massive control, that Asa ibn Riyan control thousands and thousands of people, and they which can raise up against the government. That's when they came to the decision that it was time to kill him. But his influence had spread further than just the children of Israel and certain villages of the Greeks, it had spread to the Sanhedrin themselves. Certain police officers and government representatives had started believing in the teachings of Jesus. And those are the ones who helped him to keep from being crucified. Obviously, most of the time, the people that you deal with in this country are Christians, either Jews or Christians. Their biggest preface is Jesus Christ is God, you know, of the Trinity and whatnot. Now, I've, you know, been shown by Muslims in the Bible where it says Jesus is not God. Right. Now, uh, I'd like you to explain, you know, to me, everybody, you know, the real story about Jesus Christ. It's a long and story. I, I took it. you make it brief, yeah. Jesus was not a Christian. Jesus was an Israelite. Jesus did not come to Christians. Jesus said in the book, through John of Zabidi, which most people don't even know when they read the book of St. John. They don't even know the book, who wrote the book. John of Zabidi, who was a descendant of Jesus, one of his relatives. He wrote concerning Christianity, but what? Me and my brother first found a man 
who is being called the Messiah. Why is St. John? Chapter 1. They point out that Jesus said, I, in St. John, chapter 1, I come to my, my own, and my own receiveth me not. Well, what the heck do I mean by my own? You told me that Jesus was the Son of God. You told me that Jesus was God. Correct? You know what they tell you? So if Jesus said I came to my own, Jesus came to other sons of gods, <laughs> or Jesus came to gods, what did he mean by my own? Did he meant mortals? And if he said I come to my own and meant mortals, then he was admitting to be a mortal. If he meant God, then he meant he was a God. He came to God. And that ain't you. Maybe. I want to say. And it doesn't matter. When he said, I come to my own, what was the very statement own bringing out? I come to my own, but my own receiveth me not. But as many as receive me, to them I give power to become the sons of God. That's what he said. What did he mean? Who was his own? I tell you who was his own by him. I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What does that mean in English? I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. First of all, in that statement, we come to the conclusion that certain children of Israel are or were lost. So he wasn't talking about any and any and all the established tribes in Jerusalem. He was talking about a group of people that was not able to be found. And who were these people, according to him? Lost tribe of Israel. Now, Let's go back and understand. Israel, when modernly broke down, comes out to be Judah. Some people who don't know any better. But for the time's sake, let's leave it that way. The Jews have what they call Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Right? They keep the Shabbat, the Sabbath, and a whole bunch of pa or Passover, a whole bunch of different laws that Jesus himself kept. Jesus had a bar mitzvah when he reached 13. Jesus had a circumcision. What is the meaning of the circumcision? What did it mean? I'll tell you what it meant. The circumcision meant that you was under the covenant that God made with Abraham. Right? Is that what the Bible teaches? That the circumcision is a sign that you were under the covenant that God made with Abraham to his son. God himself therefore has to get circumcised to be under his own covenant? <coughs> Come on. Jesus came to his own, the children of Israel, the lost sheep, but they did not receive him. And as many of them, not as many of them, he's talking about everybody, no. As many of them that received him, he gave the power to become the sons of God. And he explained by son of God what he meant when he said, I'm going to teach you to pray this way. And what was the first statement he made after that? What is it? Our Father who art in heaven. As many as believe on me, to them I give the power to become sons of God, he said. And then he said, and pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He didn't mean that anybody could claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their paternal father. He meant that all of us were children of Allah, including himself. And when we are born again, what do you mean by this now? When we are born again, saved in our spirit and our soul, which means we take on a new mother and a new father, born again, born of what did he say though? Born of the spirit. You understand? This is the path to see in the kingdom of heaven. And who resides in heaven? Our father who art in heaven. <laughs> And to be born again in the world means for me to accept a new mother and a new father. Who is my new mother and my new father according to the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven. Elohim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, you want to take it. That is our heavenly father. That's who Jesus was directing us at. And that would be our new parents. And we become the sons and daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we submit our total will to his services. When we drop our nets 
and become fishes of men. When we spread the gospel, the good news throughout the world, that there is a key to eternal salvation. And that key to eternal salvation is the drop where you believe you are and become what you really are. And what is that according to the Bible? I blew my spirit into man and man became a living soul. A living soul. Stop being what you think you are and be what you really are. A living soul. And being a living soul means that you come from the Father because He sent His Spirit into this world into every man it says in St. John's this is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into this world so if you become a living soul then what are you becoming? as a spiritual being you become a spiritual son of the divine soul that's what Jesus was talking about and he went to the children of Israel and tried to make them see that and they couldn't understand and they wanted to kill him you know what he said concerning that though? blessed is he who is persecuted after righteous name's sake because his is the kingdom of heaven our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread etc 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 he said there's coming a kingdom of heaven and a kingdom of earth you see that we're trying to pull the kingdom of heaven down to the kingdom of earth so that we can live in a state of peace until the end. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Right in the Bible. Right? Now, Jesus said, Bless are the peacemakers. You're a Muslim. Right? What does it translate? Salam. Muslim, not salam, not submit. The other one, salam. <laughs> peace. Bless all the peacemakers. Jesus was telling his followers that Muslims were going to come and they would be the sons of God. He wasn't talking in the present tense. He was talking in the future tense. Bless all the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Not meaning we are lost children. He conceived us. Meaning that we are lost children because he is our heavenly father. And Jesus' message was very clear. Preachers and teachers try to start the meaning, to confuse you, so that you cannot be born again, that you cannot be saved, that your spirit, that you don't live by a spirit, but start to live by body. You know the disadvantage in living by body? You want to know the disadvantage in living by a body? The disadvantage of living by a body means that when the physical world perishes, you perish. It says right in the Bible, I'm going to wipe away this world and the heavens and bring in a new heavens and a new earth. Well, if all you know how to do is reside in a physical plane, when the destruction comes, which is very clear in Revelation, very clear in the Quran, of the Zinzai, of the Kariyat, the Tariq, very clear in the Quran, there's going to be a shaking and going to shake the whole world, and men are going to be running like moths, and the mountains are going to crumble like dust, and the earth is going to spit forth this message, and people who have said that there was no judgment day, they're going to say, this is the judgment day, and people who pointed at the righteous and said, those people are out of whack with time, are going to be the ones cast in fire and brimstone. All this is in the Torah, all this is in the Quran, all this is in the Injil. These are the words of an almighty that have passed the boundaries of time and men and prophets. He said that that day will come. Assalamu alaikum, my teacher. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, uh, the tape that you had made out, um, who and what are you? Uh, you had done the tape about the blue planet of earth here is a prison. Can you explain that to me? The planet is a prison? Yeah. Because the spiritual part of man is constantly trying to get away from this bacteria he calls his body. His, his spiritual part is the essence of him. That's the intellect. The physical body is the thing that keeps weighing us down with the desires of the world, the likes. It's the, it's the physical that makes you put that extra amount of ketchup on the french fry. The hot, I like hot sauce. Hot sauce. Little pepper. Everything has to be overdone to please you. If someone doesn't fry your chicken right, you go, I don't like that chicken. <laughs> you didn't eat the chicken for the frying, you ate the chicken for the chicken. And the nourishment, it should have been, which is there's no nourishment in chicken, a dead chicken, but the whole thing is just think that there's nourishment in eating dead birds, right? But now not only must it be dead well, it must be cooked well. So if you realize it, you're, you're flattering your body. You get up in the morning, you look at yourself in the morning and go, 
Then you make that last cute face. Cute face in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> then you're ready for the world as you have it. Ready. So the problem is, you are a prisoner to the earth. And because the body is of the earth, therefore you are a prisoner in your body. You've got to learn to think outside of the body. You gotta get some pictures and eat, eat it. Because there are people that don't have that. People that eat rice every day or beans every day. That's all they eat. They don't eat like you rice, potatoes, dead carcass. You know, they don't eat like that. You have a variety of things. You've been given the abundance. But believe me, I, I explained in the class of the family not long ago that man is under the impression that Mother Nature is his friend and Mother Nature is your biggest enemy. Mother Nature is the one that makes you fall down the stairs. Mother Nature is the one that makes you lean on the eye and the accident. But it's because you, know, you, you, you think she likes you. Mother Nature is the one that makes you step down the gas a little faster. Because the spiritual you is trying to get away from this physical. This physical is the man. The spiritual is the God in you. You know what I'm saying? And it wants to get away from this body. Because this body keeps weighing it down. You'd love to commit suicide if you thought it wouldn't hurt. You'd automatically go to heaven. Unfortunately, the book wasn't written that way. It will hurt and you won't go to heaven. <laughs> You're not getting out of here that easy. You have brought yourself into this mess. And you're going to have to think your way out of it. And you're building more and more of this world around yourself in each day of I got to put money aside, I got to get a thing about my career, I got to think about my future, I got to have some food in the future. Every day, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Not give me bread for tomorrow, next week in the bank account, the security and insurance. No Muslim has insurance. No real Muslim puts insurance on himself. Right? Because when Allah takes you, you're supposed to go. We know that Allah gives and Allah takes. And from Allah we come, into Allah we must return. When your 13th hour ticks, you just better be ready. Don't weigh down yourself with the things of this world. Because this world, the Quran says, is rented to you. It's temporary. You're just moving through it. And you know how hard it is across the desert, the more stuff you have? The smart man takes water. The fool takes bread. And butter. And cheese. And beans. Then the next thing you need is a pot. And a knife to split the butter. And a little salt for the beans. Can you carry an onion? A little bit of spice? Then the journey that was once 10 miles becomes a hundred miles in burden. Well, you're traveling through a journey of life on your way back to the spiritual you, back to the essence of Allah. And you're keeping, you're putting on more weight every day. More things you like, more things you want. How do you explain to people who are in the West Indies, uh, the cent in Central America? The West Indies? Yeah. How do I explain them? Yeah, we're, we're okay. their background. All right, when they're the slave trade, what, another thing that black people are being duped into believing is that John Hawkins is the only man who had anything to do with the slave trade. You don't know nothing about Prince Henry, who went from, the, from, uh, went from Spain over to the northern regions through Morocco, because the Spanish hate the Spaniards of Spain, hated the original black Spanish. The original Spanish people are blacks. The Spaniards were whites. There's a big difference. Puerto Rico is the name of a port of uh, something took place. That has nothing to do with the people. Now they call them Puerto Ricans. There's no such thing as a, a Puerto Rican. These are black African people. You follow that? They, they do that to you. You're from Florida, they say you're a flower. They come out, they tell you about some flowers. Everybody from Florida is flowers. So you understand, but you're a New Yorker. All right, so here we go. Um, Prince Henry had a slave trade who went to the northern region of Africa and took people. Right? Then they brought people from the western coast of Africa into America. They brought certain people into America through Virginia, and they brought certain people in America to the northern region called the New England. The people they brought from the Yoruba tribes of the west coast of Africa were what we would call mushrikeen, idol worshippers. Their features were different. Their characteristics, their lifestyle was different. Once he got these people over into the islands of Haiti, he couldn't control them because of their religion, juju, voodoo. Okay. Yeah? And they were turning the white people into zombies. <coughs> well, by that I mean they were working what they know as that Obia men, 
doctors, I don't know if you know about that, who were working roots on these different white people. These white people went back to northern Africa, around Sudan, and bought a new type of slave with a different characteristic. Characteristic like yours, with a long nose and slanted eyes. As opposed to when you walk down the streets of New York, you see a variety of different characteristics. You see people with uh, thick lips, thick noses, you know, broad forehead type of effect, and they look just like they came from Nigeria. And if you go to Haiti, you'll see that. If you go to Trinidad, on the other hand, or Grenada, you see another type of black person. You see long noses, slanted eyes, and some people with curly hair. Now, if we look to the continent of Africa, we'll find that that exists amongst black people. If we look at Ethiopia, if we look at Somali, just a minute, and if we look at Sudan and Aswan, the original, the original Egyptians, we'll see that these people have long features, slanted eyes, uh, our tone, and if we travel over to the Congo, to Nigeria, to certain parts of Africa, we'll find people with the features of the people in Haiti. You follow that? So those people are a mixture of certain tribes. And when the people on the east coast of Africa was brought over, they were supposed to be the rulers. They became what Brother Malcolm referred to as house niggers. They, they used the Muslims as house niggers. They didn't, they, and they used the west coast Africans as people who worked the fields. And that caused the rival. So the preachers became the Muslims. Why? Because they knew that these people spoke Arabic. They were educated because they were descendants of the Permits and they believed in one creator. Whether it was through Unkin Unkin, right? Or, or through Islam, they believed in one God and it was easier to convert them to this newfound political religion called Christianity than it was the people coming from Yoruba who believed in uh, what they call Arishi, which is descendancy worship. Worship of Shango, or Bakala, or Boon, Yemaya, different gods of their descendants. They couldn't convert them, so what they later on did is they combined it. And when the people of Latin descent regressed back towards their ancestral worship, they came up with saints. All of the overtones of Christianity only had these saints who were African, Shango, and Saint this, and Saint that, and the black saint of this. You follow? That's how that happened. I'd like to know what is the difference between the soul and the spirit, and what is the different relations between the two? It's a good question, very good question. Now, what one must understand is that everything that lives has a spirit. But everything that lives does not have a soul. When you look in the scriptures, you find in Genesis that the Lord said, I breathe into man of the breath of life, and man became a living soul in Genesis 1, correct? But that's what he says, I breathed into man of the breath of life. And then what happened? Man what? The catch word is he became a living soul. He developed into a living soul. Like David said in the 23rd Psalms, he restoreth my soul and leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So the soul is, is not the personality. The personality is the spirit. The soul is the emotional body. The soul is the thing that will make your tongue confess the truth when your mind wishes to tell a lie. All right. Life moves through the body by way of the spirit. But the emotions of the body are the soul. The personality is in relation to the spirit. You can create a personality, a fake person. But while you're pretending you're something you're not, your soul tells you the truth. <laughs> so the devil, the white man, which is going to be your next question, he is void of soul, emotional body, but does have a spirit. He can act so well that he can convince me and you he is the bionic man <laughs> and that he can beat the world. He is a great actor, but he has no soul. On the judgment day, the spirit of the devil, like Revelation 20 says, will be cast into a lake of fire and sulfur, or brimstone, eternally. And those false prophets and false teachers, which are blacks, with souls, who came up under him, your father, will be cast with him. You will be judged out of the records of your soul, which is in alien and from the actions of your spirit, which is in Sijin, two places where records are kept. But you understand what I'm saying? So there is a difference. The soul is a, an emotional body, and let's just talk about it. I know you have another question, but let's just talk about it a minute, because the devil 
the so-called white man confesses that you are soul people, that you have souls, and that when you eat the filth of the earth, the pig, you're eating soul food, food is strictly for soul people, the guts and the intestines and the foots and the tails and the ears and the heads of this most foul creature called the pig, which the Bible, Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7, forbids people to eat. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7 forbids people, which would include Christians and Jews also if they read the Bible. Uh, one of the pamphlets said that one of the beliefs in the community is that Jesus is the Savior. And I didn't quite understand that. We as Muslims do believe that Isa and Maryam, Jesus, is the Savior. His name, Isa, in Arabic or in Hebrew, Ais, or Yeshua, means one who saves. He was sent into the world by Allah Ta'ala to save the lost sheep of the house of Bena Israel, who have strayed, as the Quran says in Surah Al-Fatiha, into Galeen, into darkness. They broke the covenants of the Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, and turned back against the teachings that have been prescribed in the Torah to Moses. And when Jesus came to them, he mentioned to them that the law came from Moses, but grace and truth came through him in St. John's. The reason why I said grace, because grace, ni'mah, is the same thing we use in the Quran, we say, an'amta. And that's a form of forgiveness. When Allah Ta'ala says, he showers his grace on us, it means that he has forgiven us. You follow? So Jesus came to a people who were in darkness to give them back the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will in turn make him their savior, their Isa, or their Messiah. The word Messiah, from which the word Messiah comes, and poor translations brought about the word Christ, means to Messiah, to wipe over something and make it clean again. Because the tribe of Judah, as we know from studying the scriptures, had fallen out of light and into darkness. And during the time when Isa and Maryam came, most of them were even trying to emulate the lifestyle of the Romans. Like when Musa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Moses came, he found the other children of Israel in Egypt trying to be Egyptians. Like today, here we find the lost tribe trying to be Amorites, trying to live like the Western world. So Isa and Maryam to us is the Savior. He came as a Savior to try to redeem the lost sheep of the house of Israel and them only. The mistake that happens is that people of the Christian so-called faith declare that Jesus came to them when he made it very clear many times in the scriptures that he had not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel only. Return with the true light after this brief intermission. Now is the time to ask questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Where did all the races of people come from? Why did John have to baptize Jesus at the Jordan? And why do the four Gospels contradict each other? The answer to these questions can be with only one man, as Saeed and Imam Isa al-Hadi and Mahdi. The man who has written over 150 books on such topics as Is There Life on Other Planets? How were the pyramids built? What race was Adam and Eve? And was the Holy Quran made up by Muhammad? Or was it a divine scripture sent from the Most High? And what is the difference between the spirit and the soul? The answer to these questions can be found in the most dynamic books in history, authored by As Saeed Al Imam Isa al Hadi and Mahdi. These books can be purchased at the original Tent at 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. We, the Nubian Islamic Hebrews, would like to hear from you. Write us and let us know how the true light has made a difference in your life. Unlike those fake healers and lying preachers, we are not asking you to send us money for prayer cloths and lucky numbers. We are a self-supporting program. We just ask that you show your support by writing as Saeed al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi. Let him know how the true light has made a difference in your life. We are asking you don't send your hard-earned money to those lying men who claim to come in the name of Jesus and who really come in the name of themselves. So beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Now let us continue with the true light. Remember, you are the light, and you have the power over all things.
but people at this, you know, they want to belong. <laughs> they want to be loved. But he gave them an option that in a latter day, a comforter would come after him. And he mentions this in St. John chapter 16 and 15. After him would come another comforter, and he would lead you into all truth. Then he proceeded to explain why the next comforter was necessary, because they did not accept his teaching. That's why he said, there are many things I have to say unto you, however you cannot bear them now. But when he, the comforter, comes, he shall show you all things. You see? So what happened is Asa was talking to his people, telling them that, I know that you want to follow. And there's many things that I have to say, but y'all are not ready for them. So therefore, I will send another comforter. You follow? And the point Isa and Maryam was trying to make is that he would not speak of himself, only that which he hears will he speak. Because Isa and Maryam made the mistake of speaking about himself, which bred people into mushrikina, from tahid, from wahtahu, la shirikallahu, worship of Allah and unification, to mushrik, to binding partners in any form or fashion with Allah. Because of how he spoke, I and my father are one. When you see me, you see the father. You see, you can't get to the heaven unless you get by me, etc., etc. So what happened is, he gave them a second focal point, which was himself. And of course, being mortals, the only thing they could see was his jism, or jesset, his body. They couldn't see that he was talking about his spiritual likeness of Allah, because the Torah says that I breathed into man of my spirit, and man became a living soul. And St. John says, the same light which lighteth every man that comes into the world. You see? So he was giving a likeness of himself to the Father on a spiritual sense, but being mortals, it's so much easier to worship the image of the man that they turned and worshipped him. Right? And he had to tell them, I want you to pray after this manner. Our Father, who art where? Hallowed be thy kingdom, thy will be, on earth as it is in. That was his way of trying to tell all of them, I am not the heavenly father i am not to be worshipped i have no kingdom of my own i do not move at my own will That's, and so he said pray ye after this manner our father who art in heaven our father who art in the heavens galactical heavens Abbena. he used the word Abbena. he didn't use the word well because in the Arabic language, there's a distinct difference between Walid and Ibn. Most Muslims don't know the difference and they diverse Christians by saying Jesus is not the Son of God, point blank. And then when they get the points in the scripture where Jesus is called the Son of God, so what they have to do then is just say that the scripture are wrong, rather than to investigate the etymology of their own language and find out that in the Arabic language there are two different words for son. One is walada, as I explained many times, is the son that when a, when a mother and a father come together and have a relationship, they give birth to a child. That birth is called mawlid or milad or walada, to be got a son or a child. You, you understand the difference? On the other hand, you have the word bena, ibn, in abu. Now, in the Qur'an, we have a man called Abu Lahab. All about this man named Abu Lahab and how he is going to perish for the works that he get, did against Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, we know that the word Abu Lahab means father of flame. The word Lahab is fire or flame. We know that Abu Lahab was born in the time of Rasulullah Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, so therefore he couldn't have been the father of all flame. He, in the Quran, it refers to Bena Israel. Bena means sons of. Now, we know that all the generation between Yaqub, Jacob, all the way down to Rasulullah, there was many different intermarriages from many different tribes, and there was everybody there was not Jacob's immediate son, not his wallet. But anybody could be his Ibn. They have Ibn Khaldun. They have all these Arabic names that say Ibn this, Ibn that, which that have been applied to human beings. Okay, so Isa and Maryam was not only Ibn to Miriam, but he was also Walida to Miriam. Why was he Ibn and Walida, as the Quran says? He was Ibn because when he told his mother, Miri, Miriam, that I must be about my father's work, and was not referring to Yusuf, Joseph, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, he said to them, I must be about my father's work while his adopted father, his abu, and his earthly mother, his wali dad, was standing right in front of him. So the moment he put preference on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his father, then Mary became his adopted mother. Because we know that Allah ta'ala says in the Quran that we inspired Isa ibn Maryam with a ruh. He was called a ruh, Allah. And he was caught up in both worlds. We strengthened him with a ruh. So he had the ability to be either of earth or of heaven. He could have been of Nesut or of Malakut. The angelic board, Malak, where angels uh, reside because his father being the angel Jibreel, salam alaykum, rahmatullah, and his mother being Miriam of the house of Judah, you see. So when he made a statement to his mother that he was indeed about his father, meaning Allah, then he became her ibn and she became his ummah as opposed to walidat, your father, and opposed to walida. You know what I'm saying? So when Jesus came into the world, he came into the world with a twofold nature and had the power to wipe things clean. Muslims don't see that. So when they read from the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Ikhlas, and they read, Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kul, huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yamid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufu'an ahad. When you read that, a lack, being summun, bukmun, ummun, deaf, dumb, and blind, a lack of you know, being able to apply the gift of Allah Ta'ala, they don't hear in there, Lam Yalib, Walam Yulad, from Walada. Yet every year they choose to worship Rasulullah's birthday and they say it's Mawlid Nabi, the birthday of the Prophet. They use the word again, Mawlid, for birth. A midwife, Milad. You see, birth, uh, Eid Milad, Christians in, in Arabic language say Eid Milad, meaning the birth of Christians, your birthdays, Eid Milad, Walada. Yeah, father, not knowing this, they're confused. So therefore, they just reject the Bible, reject Isa, don't know the difference between Eben and Walid, and confuse the world. Instead of submitting that Muslims do indeed recognize that Isa el Messiah is the Messiah that was to come and save the world, and that Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Khatim Anbiya, the seal of all the prophets, and that in his hadith, his hadith. He even mentions the coming of Isa and Maryam in the latter day, okay, as a Messiah, a Savior to the world, all right? It's the only Adam in the The Prophet Adam, in the, in the Quran, they refer to Adam as Khalifa, Khalifa fil Ard. The word Khalifa is the Arabic word Khalif, means to be a successor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he finished shaping the earth and all the things in it and the system of it, which is very important, and the galactic heavens, then it says, he took leave of the state and raised himself to his throne. Now, and he left behind of himself, a portion of himself, of his roof, was placed in the chest of a being. And this being was to be a keeper and caretaker of all the things in the earth. This was Adam. And Adam had compassion. Because in order to be a caretaker, he had to have compassion for his creatures. And as Adam walked through the garden and he saw the, the goat and the sheep and the male and the female this, then Adam turned and asked, I am lonely, where is my mate? And from that Allah put him in a deep sleep, the Quran says, and we took him and removed from him a portion of him and, and shaped woman. And then brought her to him and said, this is your mate. Then he said, this is your house. Your house is Eden in Jannah. It's the garden in Egypt. That was Adam's God, and it was adorned with the best of everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Because for you to make good decisions, I had to give you willpower, self-determination. You know what I'm saying? The key is this tree that sits in the midst of the garden. You can have everything and anything you want. Don't touch this tree. And this is when Dallas or Iblis, right, the rebellious angel, came and said, he does know that in the day that you do eat of that tree, your eyes shall be open and you shall be as him. The first step is man should not want it to be as Allah, man should want to be Abdullah. So man thought, now I can have the power of the Almighty, knowing good and evil. If man had only reflected on the fact that he was in a state of good, 
already because he was in the bosom of Allah Ta'ala then all the devil could have been offering him was the evil he already had the good knowing good from evil and then man went and did the take of this loot of which he was forbidden and then it says and his eyes were open now knowing good from evil but he is going to die the body right this the just this dies this deteriorating and, and when I say die I mean the physical body goes back into elements and breaks down and goes back in cycles around again but for in terms of the consonants of your the nesson will not be here but your ruh that, that will always exist. This part was to be separated from man on a day because he did not follow that law. Illa, except those who are amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bil salih. Except for those who work to perfect. The word salih is an other word meaning to fix or to perfect. They always say righteous in this English translation. It's not the word righteous. It means to correct or fix, make better. So man has to, he has to wa'amilu salihat, work to re-perfect himself as he was when he was in the garden of Allah Ta'ala. And how does he do this? He does this by way of al-haq, and he does it by way of al-sabr. Why these two things? Al-haq is a, does not just mean truth. Al-haq means, with truth as the word sabr, to be trusted, or to be honest, or something you can, sadaq Allah Allah's name, something you can put to trust in. That breathes the word truth. But the word al-haq means facts that are beyond doubts. How do we understand that? Because Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that this Qur'an is al-haq. You follow that? Then later, but, and in the beginning of the Qur'an, he says, ذلك الكتاب لا رأيب So al-haq means something that cannot be doubted or questioned. Al-haq. You follow that? And he's telling us that we have to perfect our beings until we become al-haq. And we only do that through sabr. Patience. We're going to do that by using something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that animals do not use, our intellect. He, he taught man how to use his mind and he recorded it down with the pen, it says in the Quran. And with this here, we'll learn a way of life and maintain patience through prayer. And when we find the, the raving insane in us rising up, he says fast. We find the animal nature coming out of us fast. So, Adam's purpose on earth was to be a caretaker of this earth, right? And then the man fell from that grace and brought about death and shame and, and sin and greed. And how, and how intricate it is, here's how man responded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when asked. And this is our nature. When Allah asked him why he took up the fruit, what did he say? He said, the woman you gave me. <laughs> That's how far man had fallen. The woman you gave me, gave me the fruit and I did eat. Man tried to blame his own fall on Allah. The woman you gave me. If I, you gave me as a gift and then she made me eat and I ate. This is the logic we use. When he told me the woman, he said, then why did you eat it? Well, the serpent tricked me. And if you walk up to a little child right now who does something wrong, and there's a big and a little kid there, <laughs> you go to the big kid and say, who broke that his egg? Just like the woman, you th like, like the man, the oldest child, he's going to point at the youngest kid. He broke it. You know, the little kid, he say, uh, he like the man said, well, I didn't really, really break it. <laughs> I didn't, you know, this is what man has done in, in the presence of Allah. Man tried to hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the garden that Allah created. Think of the logic. This is how far we have fallen from the divine knowledge, from the intellect of a God state when we was, when we was, not going to die, then we was in a God state. You know that? And to a man. When they said, now the man has become one of us, knowing good from evil. Look how far we fell. We was in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's garden trying to hide from him. <laughs> and Allah comes in and says, Adam. <laughs> say, yeah. Are you trying to hide from me? Well, you know, this is the logic of it. Well, I know that you, how did you know I'd be angry? You know, then he looked at him and said, how, who told you to cover? I always tell the people. People told me I saw an angel. I saw the Almighty. I asked him, was he naked? They go, what, is it? what difference does that make? It makes a big difference because they don't have no sewing machines in heaven. So you ain't going to see no angel in no robe. Clothes came with shame. Angels are not going to manifest in robes. And in Hadith, they speak of the angel Jabal coming and you know, having on a white jelly beer. Now, I want to understand this. <laughs> Who made this jelly beer if he came from heaven? Or does Jabal live on earth? This must be addressed. Because when we get back to that state there, we start deciphering that which is Furukan from that which is Bayina. That which is allegorical from that which is clear. 
You understand? When you say the angel Gabriel came and had on a white jalabia, you must be talking in allegorical things. Because the angel Gabriel is not going to come with a hoop. Some, my wife put this button on here and sold it. <laughs> Who sold Gabriel's jalabia? You understand what I'm saying? Man has fallen that far away. That's why when the Quran came, they say, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ But it doesn't stop. Who then in the الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ It's telling you who they are. They're not going to get caught up in who said this and who did that and why did this. They're saying, Allah, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا يشرك الله. That's it. That is the true believer. All the people that go around say, I'm far, we're right. The Nation of Islam, we're right. The Bilalians, we're right. The Masa Ikwa, Masa Taqwa. Those are not people that have Taqwa. We are fools arguing over a game that we don't even know the rules of. Men are arguing over which path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is right. Any path that gets you there is right as long as in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. It's simple. I know there's other religions like Roman Catholic and Methodist and the rest of them, other than uh, the Islamic faith. It's the best way to put this. Hey, that's uh, what to say. No, because I had another question and it coincided with that. No, oh, you can both oh, uh, What I had to say. Let me establish one thing. All real, true religions are one. <laughs> it's the men that's having all these problems trying to prove that they are better than the next person. You understand that? A real, devoted, true person who calls himself a follower of Christ is no different than a Muslim. You understand? Somewhere along the line, the instructions got different. But the principles of it is divine love. All of them. And any religion that don't teach divine love does not fall in the class of religion. It falls into a class of something else. Most of the time, I politics. Know. I know what it is now. Uh, the laws before with Moses and the five books, a lot of uh, religions don't go with that today. They right. go only with the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I notice that you go with the old and the new. Where is it in there where it says that Jesus said, don't listen to mo what Moses said, and no I'm going to combine it? Right in the books of St. John's, right in St. John's chapter 1, Jesus tells them that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. So he's telling those people to follow Moses' law right there. But they don't do it. You say to the average a Christian, you keep the Sabbath? No. Do you eat pork? Yes. Jesus didn't eat pork. It's in the Bible, right? In Leviticus chapter 11, 7. Okay. Now the other one says it too long. 7 11. It goes back and forth. Thank you. It's like the rock. <laughs> okay, it says right here. And the swine, meaning the pig, though it divided the hook and is club footed, Yet chew it, not the cook. I mean, it doesn't eat wheat like a cow does and chew cook. Y'all southerners know what I'm talking about. City people, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> chew it, not the cook. He is unclean to you. You see that? Of their flesh, what? Shall you not eat? You understand that? This is the law of Moses that Jesus said we should follow. You understand that? Jesus used the pig as a demon. He said, he cast the demon into the swine. You see that? Okay, why and how did somebody justify people who follow Christ being clean? They said Jesus came to make all things new. He did not say that. He said, I come to confirm the law of Moses, not to change it. He did never change anything Moses taught. He came to make it clear. There's no reason for anybody to eat pork who says they follow this body, be they a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim. Because the Lord tells us in His commandments that we should. Um, the one, I was talking with a Christian before, and he was saying something, um, I forgot where, the, where it was located, but he said uh, that uh, you're not under the law no more, but you're under the grace. That's what he oh, was yes, using. But it doesn't say that in the Bible in St. John's. Let's turn to St. John's here. So it's easy for them to say, to do comparisons when they step away from the Lord. Stay in the books, they ain't got that problem. Follow everybody, they keep getting out the books and getting in their own mouths and their own heads. Stay in the Lord's law, we ain't got that problem. We won't have no fight. Everybody wants to be heavy. Let's go to St. John's chapter 1. It says here, in chapter 1, verse 17, let me go back to 16, and of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Now that statement is there. 
from Jesus is while Jesus is totality, men have received grace. That's the covenant. Then, for however, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came in Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom, which means caressed of the Father, He has declared Him. Uh, and this is a record of John when the Jews sent priests. They're talking about when a priest came out and said, What is this man Jesus doing? Who is he? And who are you? And he said, I'm not Jesus, the Messiah, I'm not Elijah, and I'm not the prophet to expect. They're telling them that the law, that they were basing it on, was Moses' law. Grace, if you look it up in the dictionary, you know what it means? It means mercy. And why they say grace came from Jesus? Because Jesus said he came to remove what from the world? Sin. He came as a what to the world? A mercy, he says right in the Bible. Jesus came to tell the children of Israel, if y'all have fallen away from the commandments of the Lord, if you get back on the commandments of the Lord through me, follow the way I do it, it says no man will get to the kingdom of heaven unless he goes by me. Follow this here and you will make it. That's what he was telling him. And what did he say? He came to his own and his own received him not. Then it goes on to say, grace came from Jesus, stage after stage. And the law came from Moses. The law they talk about is the books. They'll go down further and they'll tell you. <clears throat> they're talking about the, that this man is mentioned in the disciples. Oh, sorry, mentioned in the books of the prophets. Here it is. 44. And Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found this Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So now, that means these disciples of Jesus did what? Was reading the law of Moses. Correct? But the disciples read the law of Moses. How can his modern day disciples deny it? So these men here, if they read the law of Moses and used that to verify that Jesus was the Savior, meant that they had to abide by those laws. Right? Jesus kept his Sabbath. The Last Supper was Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. The holidays of Judaism was right there that he was doing. He was doing what the tradition of the Passover, which is the symbol of the children of Israel, passed over. And that's a Jewish holiday. Jesus put on a yarmulke because <laughs> he had to do it and read from the Torah, which is a tradition, and broke the bread, which is a tradition of Judaism. Jesus himself was following those laws. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know why they can say they follow him and don't follow him. Jesus didn't go to church on Sunday. Jesus kept his Sabbath. And when it came down to a cow, an oxen falling into a lake, he said it would be wrong to let that ox drown, even if it is his Sabbath. That's all he said. And the priest used that as an excuse to say he's going against the law. It would be wrong to let an ox drown in a lake on the Sabbath, because the law of Israel said if an animal dies of its own, you cannot eat its flesh. That would be wrong. Not to help a crippled person or a blind person because you can't aid a person because of speed on the Sabbath. That's definitely not what the Lord said. He's made to abide by it. It was not made to abide by you. from the Holy Quran chapter, Separation of Cells. Now the 96th, originally the first chapter, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Translation by As-Sayyid Al-Imam Isa al-Hadir Mahdi. And it reads as follows. Begin all things with the illustrious names of Allah, the healer of the most merciful. O seal of the prophets of Allah, Muhammad, by the supreme sovereignty of your sustainer creator. You are being ordered to read by beginning with the name of your illustrious sustainer who created all things. He, Allah, created all human beings of a separating cell. So read because your sustainer, Allah, is most generous. He uses the quill to teach. He, Allah, taught human beings what they would have never known. 
You have been listening to The True Light with a Saeed and Imam Esau Hadi Mahdi. The Nubian Islamic Hebrew Mission would like you to write or send questions to True Light, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 